Hello, hello, hello. Hello. What's going on, man? Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Welcome, you guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, hope everybody's having a great Sunday. Hey, Siobhan, how you doing? Looking hey. forward to the webinar. I love it. I love it. I love it. Hey, Where are you checking Siobhan. in from, Siobhan? Let us know. Let us know what yeah, y'all checking in from. Yeah, I want to know everybody from. from. Real man, we happy to have everybody on here. Hope y'all get a lot of a lot from the information we're gonna give. Um, I definitely want to just Florida. Okay, okay. All right, Florida. Florida in the building. Yeah, I want to give out as much information as possible. That way, somebody could take it and run with it. You know what I'm saying? All right, Hampton, VA. Hampton, VA, Riverview, Florida. Florida. Okay, okay. Let's go. We are in the building. I love it. Savannah, Savannah, Georgia. Oh, you down there by the porch. You're trying to get to that bag bag. Hey. Let's go. Container Let's seat. go. Anderson, That's South Carolina. Carolina. Hey, the porch right down there, too. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of freight, man. South Carolina, Savannah. Let's go. Happy to see you, you both. You were amazing uh, on truck. We really appreciate you so that. Much, thank you for checking us out. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? We love it, man. We love the support. We thank everybody thank you. For, for listening to our story. You know what I'm saying? And it's been a long journey. Definitely. A long journey. Definitely six and a half years of of hustle. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like we like, you know, a lot of people heard our story. We'll go back through it again. You know what I'm saying? But I just want to know, like, you know, let everybody know, like, you can come from from nothing to something. Like your life can change as long as you take like the right steps to make some change mm-hmm. in your life. You literally can be anything you want to be in this world. Yeah, yeah. We've seen you people can. change their lives in six months. So you can do the same thing. You just never know what, you know what I'm saying? your next six months could be like, or what you not giving up can do to somebody else or can, can inspire in someone else. That's right. You know what I'm saying? So needless to say, we're going to head and crank this thing like soldier boy. Let's do it. You let's go. (laughs) (laughs) All right, everybody. So today, you know, we're going to talk about building a six to seven freight, seven figure freight agency from home. Um, like we have, you know what I'm saying? Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about our story as well. And so hear the whole rundown, like what we do on a daily basis, what it takes, what we've been through and all of that good stuff. Cause yeah. it's a lot going on in the trucking industry. Um, there's a lot of different niches you can get involved in. So it kind of gets confusing. So people, they don't know what it, what, what they want to do. Definitely. They're either in the industry um, and trying to pivot or scale their business, or you have someone that's totally new to the industry and have either enjoyed trucking, know someone in trucking, or just see people moving around. Like, you know what? That seems like an interesting industry to get involved in. So I want a piece of that. Yeah. So definitely you know. a lot of earning potential. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't like to use the word recession proof, but it's definitely one of the most recession resistant um fields Industries. out there, industries yes. out there. You know what I'm saying? All right. Indi- well, Indianapolis. Oh, Indianapolis. Yes tongue-tied when i say it <laughs> <laughs> and also y'all we, y'all stay to the end we're going to have a q a we love to answer questions like mm-hmm. anybody who knows us like we just you know we love to give out as much information as possible because i want to see other people win definitely <laughs> that's sure. our goal all right so stay to the end we're going to you know answer any questions anyone have mm-hmm. um a little bit about our story just to piggyback on it um me and Tia, we got married in what 2012 mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we met in 2011 on Facebook. I hit her in the DMs. You know what I'm saying? It went down in the DMs. Hit her up. You know. It was so weird. It was so weird. Like, I put up one simple post. What was I, it? I, it was something about, um, I hate folding clothes. I was like, you can fold mine. And it just <laughs> went from there. It went from there, you know what I'm saying? So off of Facebook posts, I hopped in the DMs. You know what I'm saying? And from there, it kind of blossomed six months later. We was married, you know what I'm saying? Crazy, crazy. Six, six months later. So uh, we've been building ever since. You know, when I met Tijuana, you know, I was driving forklifts um, in warehouses, working for temp service, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I also drove box trucks for different people and stuff like that. So um, I was just kind of tired of not being able to get past that week-to-week hustle, mm-hmm. that week-to-week grind. And then when I met her, I was like, dang, it's somebody who kind of got their shit together and I can kind of grow. You know what I'm saying? Maybe she could teach me something because she's a little older than me. So maybe she can, you know what I'm saying, give me some game. The hate be real. <laughs> so that, that's pretty much where that started as far as us meeting. 
Um, after I went overseas for a minute, I was overseas contractor. Um, and I started to, you know, learn more about transportation and, you know, ownership. Cause of being overseas, if for anybody who's ever been like a, a government contractor, you see so many people over there is making money. They've been making money for years. Mm -hmm. And they start talking about the businesses that they have back home in the States and all their investments and shit. So it had me like it sparked that entrepreneur in me to be like, man, when I get back home, I don't wanna, I don't wanna go back to what I I, I was I came from. Right. Like, how do you go from a civilian contractor making six figures? <laughs> to coming back working in the warehouse making nine ten dollars an hour yeah and i did that i came back i went back to my old job um and i stayed there for a half a day um <laughs> i pulled up they told me it was like yeah we're gonna start you off at 11 dollars 15 cent an hour and you know what i'm saying we're gonna start you off on the fort lift pulling dunnage out the racks so i was like i did that i got back to lunchtime and i looked around the lunchroom and i saw everybody look so sad you know what i'm saying i was like damn do i want to spend my life just Come in this sad break room, everybody eating them leftover lunches and just looking depressed. I was like, nah, I got up. I walked straight out that lunch room and I left. You know what I'm saying? I got home and she looked at me like, What are you doing here? <laughs> he was like, I I can't do it. I can't. I, I went there. He's like, it's depressing. Like going from making that kind of money to now working a nine to five, it was just so tough. It was Ooh. tough. And I was working for a lady at the time doing taxes and real estate. And so the lady, her husband had a trucking company. So they was like, well, you know what? We need drivers. So we end up getting into the trucking industry. Yep. I, I drove for him. You know what I'm saying? And he eventually hit me up. He was like, hey, this ain't really working for me as far as me seeing the kind of money I want to see off of your labor. So I'm about to get ready to sell the truck. And I was like, oh, 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 oh. what you mean sell the truck? So mm -hmm. I had two options. Either I come up with a way to buy this truck or I'm back in the same position I was in the beginning. You know what I'm saying? So luckily it was around tax time. You know what I'm saying? T was about to get a nice tax check. I was like, look. Believe in me. <laughs> believe in me. You know what I'm saying? Like we gotta, we gotta get this truck. So we end up, I end up becoming an owner operator. You know what I'm saying? Just using her tax check to be able to get a high interest loan to get my Hino right there. You see my truck right there? Boom. That was my Hino, right? I had this big dream. I was like, like, once I get this truck from him, I'm gonna be getting all the money from the, you know what I'm saying, from the truck. So I'm gonna be balling. You know what I'm saying? So we're gonna be good. Just get the loan. But you know what I'm saying? Sometimes things happen. Mm -hmm. So in reality, the truck kept breaking down. You know what I'm saying? From repairs, the wheels. First, it was the transmission line. Transmission line went out like fuck. Transmission line went out. Had to order that. Had to, I was down for like two weeks waiting on the transmission line to come in. Mm -hmm. I hadn't made no money yet. So I had to get up under the truck. I'm on Google and YouTube trying to figure out how to put a transmission line on. Right. I finally figured it out. Yeah. <laughs> in the front in the front yard. In the front house. Crazy. All going all down the road, y'all. All down the whole street. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> every day I'm up here, people, neighbors riding by, like, you all right? I'm like, yeah, I'm up under this damn truck. So I ended up spending, I ended up spending so much money on this truck. I was upside down. So yeah, I was making money, but it was like, it was going through my hands and I was in the negative. You know, I had a high truck note, fuel was high, insurance. insurance. Oh my goodness, $2,000 a month insurance. It was just, I was just going down fast. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, as a, a man, you just told your wife, give me the whole tax check. I'm, I'm betting it all on me. You know, I'm doing everything I can from my end, but you know how it is. If you're a mm -hmm. truck driver or you're in trucking, if those wheels ain't spinning, if you ain't in that truck rolling, you ain't got to drive in there, that truck ain't making no money. None. So my truck couldn't make that much money. I was I was down bad. I didn't have no business in no trucking business because I didn't, I wasn't financially ready for that kind of thing. Yeah, that's the one thing. <laughs> you definitely have to be financially ready because I know the lady um, who had the trucking company, her and her husband, it was always a battle about those trucks. So I personally, after just always hearing her fussing about those trucks, never wanted anything to do with trucking. Nah, it Period. wasn't sexy. Right. It wasn't sexy at all. But at the time, it really um, helped him to stay employed. You know what I'm saying? Versus going to find a job, not really having an extensive background. Yeah. You know, having the um, government contracting definitely would have helped but you know how that is going to all these different interviews and 
they want to pay you pennies and all that kind of stuff. And you know in your heart that you're worth way more than that. Yeah. And it would take you a long time to, you know, work up to what you feel like you're worth. Yeah. I got, I didn't want to get caught back in that same little cycle that I was in of barely making it week to week. You know what I'm saying? Not being able to enjoy life. Mm -hmm. Like I'm looking at people on Facebook and Instagram. I'm like, damn, I want to be able to do that. You know what I'm saying? And I don't even think they didn't even have Instagram back then. It when was I was like Facebook. Facebook, it was Facebook at that yeah. time, but you'll see people on Facebook getting on planes. I hadn't even like really took no flights. Like I didn't have money for none of that stuff. Like eating out, none of that kind of crap. Mm -hmm. All right. So that was my reality. You know, I thought I was going to be balling, but in reality I was losing bad. You know what I'm saying? And what ended up happening was, you know, arguments. We're in the household, you know, bills getting behind. You know, at that point in time, we were like on the edge of getting evicted. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you ain't paying the rent. You know, <laughs> like it was like, okay, we at a point. I don't know what I'm going to do. This truck ain't making no money. We had a contract with the, the company I was under that was good. You know, it was kind of holding us up, but they lost that contract. And it was mm -hmm. like, I'm out here struggling. I was behind Kroger's and Walmart getting pallets. I was the pallet guy. I had a little plug over there. They were paying me three dollars a pallet. So every day, I'm out there. <laughs> I'm out there. He's like, "You the fan?" She's like, "You fan with your ride?" I'm like, "Yeah." I'm trying to go behind all these these supermarkets and stuff and get these pallets so I can be able to make some money. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. um, it got to a point where I was like, "I'm having to look at her dad." Like, uh, can I borrow some money? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh my god! <laughs> so that, that that that's when that was like the eye opener when I had to ask her dad for some money. And then the fact that he had me. To ask my dad. Oh boy, that was a no brain. That was like that no was a on. no no right there. He's like, oh, so your husband gonna have you to ask me? He gotta be a man to ask me himself. Boy, I was just like, but so I had to, huh. you know what I'm saying? Like if you, <laughs> as a man, bro, you could, you know, it, it, that was hard. So, um, but I had seen how he was living. You know what I'm saying? Her dad, like he was, he had the, the horses behind the house. He had every new freaking car you can name in the driveway always had the chains on and, you know, a bunch of money. I was like, man, what does he do? You know what I'm saying? He was a freight agent. And I'm sitting right there like, and I'm looking at him like he's, he's not like, you know, one of those preppy guys, you know what I'm saying? He's just regular. And I was like, hold up. So he doing what? And he was talking, talking to her about the kind of money he made. And I was like, shit, if he can do it, I know I can do it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, man, it's time for a change. I ain't making no money with this truck. So we end up selling the truck, getting the money from that to be able to hold us over. Mm -hmm. Well, I was like, look, we, we about to jump out here and do this, this freight agent thing. You know what I'm saying? We about to hop into this. And she was just like, fuck it. <laughs> I support you. Like, we ain't got nothing else going on. I know what the other, other side look like. So mm -hmm. fuck it. Let's go. Let's go. So, so then with that, when we decided to go ahead and do it, it was, we actually, because we did not have a book of business, we didn't really have the knowledge. We, we just really had the trucking um, side of it. So when we started reaching out to different brokers, they're like, okay, where's your book of business? Yeah. We don't have it. Okay, let me try another one. Where's your book of business? We don't have it. Try another one. Like, y'all, it was, it was crazy. Yeah, so finally, what I did was I called the company her dad worked for, the broker she was up under. And um, once I called her, I, I talked to the owner. The owner actually picked the phone up and I was like, uh, yeah, this such and such uh, son-in-law. I mean, I know he works for you. Um, I want to see if I can, you know, kind of get up on you. I'm new to the industry, but I'm hungry. I want the opportunity. And I mean, five minutes later, her dad called back. What your husband doing calling my mama? She, he want the opportunity. He ready. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like, he hungry. Like, you know what I'm saying? You ain't, you ain't taking him serious, so he's going to do whatever he got to do. Absolutely. So he ended up referring us to a great brokerage. You know what I'm saying? And they gave us a shot. You know what I'm saying? For most of you, you've seen, like, Truck and Hustle. You've seen, like, the brokers work for. BTB, one of the greatest brokerages, you know, like, a home for agents yeah. out there. You know, we've been under them six and a half years, and we've been able to grow. Yeah, and like, to like, this right. day, they still do not take on agents with no experience, no book of business. You have to have at least a million dollar book of business to go up under a reputable brokerage and a brokerage that is well established. Right. There's a difference between going up under a broker who is just saying they're a broker or a broker who's just starting out 
and a broker who is actually established. Big difference. A huge difference. It can make it make or break you um, as a freight agent once you actually start getting uh, shipments from um, your customers. Right, because you got cares will not haul for you if your MC sucks. If your credit's not right, they're not going to haul for you. If, you. if you're dealing with someone who just, you know, had enough money to start a brokerage, and they're like, I'm going to have agents build my business for me, but they don't have no systems, nothing to secure you, you know what I'm saying, or be able to give you any advice to, to move forward. So if you're looking to be an independent freight agent, I definitely recommend you get with someone, a brokerage that's established, that has the, the systems in place, and an established agent program that way you can be able to move to the next level and be able to excel and grow your business because it's hard enough to get customers and land them but once you get them a lot of them don't want to transfer to different companies from this company to that company or whatever so you definitely want to make sure that you cover your basis you're under a strong brokerage that can support you know your business absolutely. from a to z absolutely and the fact that you know that personal relationship that my dad had with uh, one of the ladies over at BTB, it was it was a blessing. Yeah. It was a blessing because I don't know what we'll be doing right now because nobody wanted to give us the opportunity. Yeah, I honestly don't know what we will be doing right now. Um, so it was a it was God, man. It it, it was definitely God. A lot of prayer. A lot of prayer. <laughs> a, definitely a lot of prayer because, like we said we knew what the industry entailed my dad had been doing it but and he was talking about it but he never gave us that opportunity to put that no. word in until that particular day that Devin was just like forget it i'm about to start reaching out to different brokers to see if we can you know get into the industry yeah i wanted it like i, I already knew what it was i had you know like i said i saw that he was a freight agent i thought i got on google so I was just looking up stuff about freight agents, freight brokers, sales, stuff like mm -hmm. that. So I had a good basic idea of what it took and what it was going to be. And I was like, either he going to help me on or I'm going I'm to get on either way I got to go. But I got a family to feed. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not letting nothing stand in the way of that. So mm -hmm. that's how I was. And I eventually I got on with this brokerage and I learned about being an independent freight agent. And the great thing about being an independent freight agent, like most people know us as Hudson Freight. You know, our customers know us as Hudson Freight. We have our own logo. We we run our business independently. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I can pass my business down to my kids. You know what I'm saying? The whole thing. The brokers is just my my bank. I'm up under the umbrella. But I still have my own business, which gives me the opportunity to have that uh, generational wealth that we, we kind of going for. Somebody right. can pass down to the kid. Yeah, absolutely. And the thing is, every broker does not have the same agent model. So when you look at some of these different brokers, you cannot, um, what's the word I'm looking for? You cannot brand yourself as your own business. You have yeah. to be branded as that company. So when a lot of people look at Hudson Freight, they think that we are brokers, but we are not. Right. We're just independent freight broker agents that's under a brokerage. Yes. So that means we get to market ourselves, you know, as our company name. Mm -hmm. And we don't have the overhead as we would if we were our own brokerage. Correct. You know, we don't have monthly expenses. I don't have to pay low board access or, you know, for an accounting team. I don't have to worry about paying carriers or uh, the insurances nothing. that brokers have to have, the surety bond, the MC number. You do not have to worry about any of that as a freight broker agent. All your money is profit. That's it. All right. So. What's the difference between a freight agent and a dispatcher? Question we get a lot, you know what I'm saying? Because people don't know the difference. Mm -hmm. As freight agents, we deal with the customer. We go after shippers, manufacturers, um, customers that ship products. Right. Right. They give us those, they give us opportunities to represent them and market those loads out to carriers via load boards or our network of carriers, whatever the case may be. Right. So we're pretty much like a broker. We reach out to customers. We do sales all day. And uh, we're like the we're the middleman. So you have your customer, mm -hmm. the agent in the middle, and then the carrier. Right. So we are basically like playing matchmaker. So once we get mm -hmm. shipments from the customer, 
whether it's flatbed, drive van, box truck, sprinter van, whatever, we're going to take that load and we're going to market that load, like Devin said, either on the load board or through already built relationships to the carrier. Correct. And then once that carrier, we look them up, they're good to go, and we decide to book a load with that carrier, then we're responsible for making sure that that carrier picks up on time, delivers on time. We're doing the rate confirmation, all of that good stuff. And we are responsible for the communication to make sure everything is good and the customer knows what's going on with that load. Correct. Now, on the dispatcher side, a dispatcher represents the carrier. All right. So they would be the ones that see the loads that we post on the load boards mm -hmm. or you know, they would reach out to us to say, hey, I see you have a load going from X, Y, Z to ABC. You know, I have a truck available, you know what I'm saying? Could we run it? Mm -hmm. They represent the carrier, you know, so they're the middleman usually between a carrier and say a broker or a shipper. Correct. And legally, dispatchers are not allowed to broker loads and deal with shippers directly. Correct. We hear that a lot. Like, oh, no, I have loads. I have loads. You do not have loads. You no, do man. not have dedicated lanes as a dispatcher. That's illegal. Right. As freight agents. That carrier does, but you do not as a dispatcher. But as a freight agent, <laughs> you have the legal right to broker freight. You have the legal right to reach out to shippers. Correct. That's what we do. You don't represent one carrier. You're able to, you're able to reach out and negotiate with carriers all, across, all, all around the country. Correct. All right. So that's the difference. Freight agents, we reach out to customers. We're on the customer side. Dispatchers, they represent the carrier on the for, carrier side. And, right. And that's for a percentage. So if someone reaches out to me, like I have people that reach out to me like, hey, I have this trucking company. Um, can you find my loads and how much would you charge me? Mm -mm. That's, that's not me. That's a dispatcher. A dispatcher will find your loads supposed to keep your truck running for a percentage. Me as a freight agent, I'm not keeping the truck rolling. That's not my responsibility. No. I'm working directly with my customer and then I'm finding carriers that can run the loads. If I have a carrier that falls off, guess what? I'll I can go another find one. another carrier. I'm not stuck dealing with one carrier or one truck type. That's right. We got it's endless on so, this side. So if your wheels ain't working or rolling, I'll find someone else's that, that, that is. Exactly. That's how that goes on this side. All right. <laughs> so a lot of people ask us all the time, why not start your own freight brokers? You know what I'm saying? Over the past six and a half years, what we've done over $10 million in sales together. You know, and people mm -hmm. be like, you make that kind of money. Why don't you start your own freight brokers? To me, I'm a numbers guy. It doesn't make sense. Not financially, not numbers wise, and I'll show it show it to you guys. So and you not know. mentally either. Not like, mentally, no. I like my time. I like I like enjoying what we do. That's it. That's <laughs> it. And we like moving around and all of that good stuff. I don't want to do payroll. I don't want to pay carriers. I don't. I don't want to have to be bogged down with all of that stuff. Nah, nah. So a lot of times when you, the thing about being a freight broker, a lot of people don't know is you have to be cash strong or have cash in reserves to cover your carrier costs. Mm -hmm. All right. If you're planning to factor, you would you would still make less than most freight agents. All right. With a new MC number, most carriers will not run your freight or they will want to be paid up front. Because right now, like it's a lot of scams going on in the industry. It's a lot of crazy stuff going on. So carriers want to make sure they get paid. A lot of them are getting a lot smarter on like yeah. researching the brokers and stuff they're running for and stuff like that. So having a new MC, they're gonna be like, pay me up front. All right. Another thing is you're going to have high operational costs, high monthly overhead, something I don't like. I don't like having monthly bills and overhead and stuff like that. I want to make money, right? You are, and you're also responsible for making sure all carriers are paid on time and invoicing the customers as well as still building your business. Yeah, definitely. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot already, especially if you're coming into the industry and you know nothing. Yeah. We have a lot of people reaching out to us and it's just like, oh, I want to be a broker. Why? Tell me why. Because I want my name have, on it. Yeah. Do you have experience? <laughs> no. Do you already have a customer base? Do you have a book of business? Like, what do you know about brokering? Yeah. It's always, oh, I saw somebody. 
or somebody told me that I needed to do it. Nah, this this is not one of those industries where you can just jump in, put some money into it, and you just gonna make all this money. Nah, you definitely have to get in here and put in work. You gotta put it in. You can make some unimaginable money, but you have to work. You have to work and sales sometimes intimidates people. I don't know why I love it. It's just building relationships all day long. Yeah. We're going to talk about sales too because somebody told me I don't give enough game out. So I'm making sure I give everything out today because <laughs> I take that stuff kind of stuff to heart. Somebody say, you don't give enough game. So y'all sit back in your seats. The lies. The lies. All right. Are so, you guys good? Can y'all hear us good? Yeah, y'all y'all good. If y'all, y'all good, drop some ones up in there. Are y'all enjoying the information so far? Let me know. If we born y'all, say y'all born. If it, if it's good, <laughs> say keep going. Let me get some keep going if it's getting good. Cause we we just started. It's like mm-hmm. 10. We got like 30 or 40 of them. Y'all let me know. Let's go. Give me the is born or keep going. Say the same. Okay, one. Okay. One, that means it's born. Joseph no. said it's born. <laughs> you, know, you can't drop a one if they can hear us or something. <laughs> oh man, I'm, I'm just playing. All right, so um, when we talk about factoring and the kind of money, the, the difference, this is a, a example at if you did 3% factoring as a new broker, right? As a new broker, let's say the load total is $3,000. You paid the truck 2,800 bucks. The profit is $200. After you factor at 3%, you made 90 bucks. If you think about your uh, low board access, all that kind of stuff, 90 bucks. All right. As an independent freight agent, low total 3000. I paid the truck $2,800 profit 200. After my 70% commission split, I made 140 bucks. I don't have no low. I don't have to pay no low board fee. I don't have any bills coming out of that. That's 140 bucks that I just made in my pocket for my family and I can move on to the next load. I don't have to worry about the cares getting paid. I don't have to do none of that kind of stuff. I just have to make sure my customers updated all the way through the process and send them the proof of delivery yes, once it's done. You don't have to send anything to factoring. I'm done that. This is not legible, like all this different stuff. And from what I've been told or what I've heard when it comes to factoring, if you don't pay that... If, is your customers kind of, don't pay. I think they yeah, do chargebacks. If your customers don't pay in a certain amount of time, then you're getting a chargeback. So imagine you've already counted this income in your head. And then that customer that you've been dealing with, now you're a new broker. So a lot of new brokers do not have all the, the systems, proper yeah. systems in place in order to check carriers, in order to check customers and do credit checks and stuff. It's a lot of stuff on the back end that a lot of people don't have set up. But just imagine you've already counted that income. And then 30 days on down the line or 45 days, they snatch that money back from you. So now you're in the hole with that factoring company. It's a lot of things that you have to think about and a lot of different systems that we have in place that definitely um, covers us if any situation were to arise. So we wouldn't have to worry about that. Yeah. like It it just, I don't know. It makes too much sense for me. It's plug and play. Any system I want. I'm able to talk it over with the brokers and we come up to it. They're like, hey, let's all invest in this. Mm-hmm. You know, they're all in, they're invested in our growth. You know, it's good that like once you're trying to get into that next level, like it's good to be able to partner and have like someone that supports you mm-hmm. on that journey. You know what I'm saying? So it's good to have that. But like I said, you see the money. For me, it's all about making the money too. Absolutely. And then, you know, the phone calls that we get in regards to people already have set up brokerages. Do you know how many of them are actually operating? Yeah, most of them are like, I set up a broker. I don't know what to do. do, do, do. They spent money. Yeah. That's a lot of money. 99% of the phone calls that we get, they've spent this money out already a year in, two years in, MC, authority, everything is just sitting. They did nothing. They haven't done anything. They took a class, spent a couple of thousand dollars, set up their brokerage, nothing. And then guess what the next thing is? I don't want to take a loss. You are already taking a loss. You're taking a loss, so you might as well either be a freight agent or to be a dispatcher. I don't know. Yeah, I recommend freight agents. Though. Definitely a freight agent. I ain't want to leave the dispatcher now. You ain't gonna leave but... them out. I don't be want to. I don't be want to. You know, go in on dispatchers because <laughs> right. it's some nice dispatchers out there. For the most part, some of y'all be tripping. 
All right. So the equipment need to start in this business is simple. A phone, cell phone, we all got them. We own them all day long. Mm -hmm. A computer, a laptop, mostly. Everybody got a computer, a laptop. One extra screen. I don't necessarily have to be a computer screen. A lot of people have TVs that have HDMI connections. You can use an extra TV that you got at the house. It's just good to have two screens because a lot of times if you're, let's say I'm making phone calls and I'm in my email on one screen and I'm looking at my CRM or Google on another, like two screens is like minimum. You got to have that. It's golden. Golden. Because if you work off one screen, you're going to be frustrated. Oh my God. You want to throw that computer into the wall. You want to punch your screen. Like it's going to be so many moving parts going on at one time. And then let's just say your phone's ringing. The carrier's calling about a load. Yeah. You're just trying to look at your email. Somebody emails you and you're trying to post a load. Yeah. You're going to break screen. Yeah. You do. Yeah. You're going to break screen. Yeah. So one extra screen to to lower your blood pressure. Yeah. All right. And typical office supplies, like, you know, uh, pens, sticky notes, pens, 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 sticky notes, notebooks, stuff like that. Because let's say you're on the phone with a customer and you're not in front of your computer, you want to be able to jot those notes down real quick. You know what I'm saying? So, just typical stuff that you want to just have. All right, mm -hmm. but shouldn't cost you no know, that much because a lot of people have all this stuff already at home to be able to start this. Business. There's no specific computer or laptop or anything like that that you have to get. Nope. As long as you got internet and it got a little speed on it. That's it. That's it. That's it. So. Once you got all that, then it's all about turning relationships relationships into profits. All right. Mm -hmm. So whether well, that's relationships you have with people in your your family, your friends, um, your network, like it's all it all ties in together mm -hmm. for me. Because once I started them becoming a freight agent, I started like yelling from the, the mountain type at the oh. top, like this is what I do now, man. I move freight, whoop de whoop. So I'm letting everybody know what I do, so they can be like, hey man, you should check out my company. You should whoop de whoop de whoop, mm -hmm. whoop de whoop. You know what I'm saying? So. It's good to let people know what you're doing. Because all we right? all know closed mouths don't get fed. And yeah. then we don't always know what our friend or family member, we always we don't always know what they're doing or what they actually do at their job. They could be the plug for you. Could be the plug. Because right? we know so many people that work in warehouses. Yeah, we had um we actually had a few people, but we had one person in particular, they took our class, and our first thing we always say. Look at the people in your network. Look at your Facebook friends, college friends, stuff like that. One of our mentees reached out to an old college buddy mm -hmm. who just so happened to end up owning his customer, his, his family's what, manufacturing business. Weird. And the guy, the guy was like, yeah, I started being a freight agent. He was like, yeah, my family, they left their, manu their manufacturing business to me. And he was like, oh, really? And the guy was like, yeah, I got 31 loads I'm moving today. You want a shot at him? The guy was so. He was so nervous, but it, it can happen that quick just by reaching out to people in your network. You know what I'm saying? Like that's first things first, because some mm -hmm. people are like, so many people are like, I'm scared to make cold calls. I'm scared to do all of that. Well, don't be scared to network. Mm -mm. Don't be scared to at least tell people what you do, because you never know. Everyone on your timeline, on your Facebook, on your Instagram, somebody works in a warehouse. Somebody drives a truck. Somebody has some BOL. Somebody can point you in a direction where you can plant some seeds to build some relationships. Definitely. All right. Definitely. And you just never know where those relationships will take you. No. The person that you're talking to may not be the right person, but they could probably um, direct you in the direction of somebody that can help you. Definitely. Like, you know, my homeboy, he work at such and such. He the yeah. manager over there. And I know they got, they have trucks coming in over there all the time. He always telling me something about drivers and check-ins and this and oh, Okay, yeah, I definitely want to talk to him. Straight up. You know what I'm saying? So friends and family, truck drivers. You got friends, family. You're a truck driver. Those BOLs that they have, golden. That's letting you know places that actually ship out freight. You know what I'm saying? They can say, hey, I got a dry van. I, these are my BOLs. They're letting you know this is all dry, dry van freight. So you call those customers, hey, I got some dry vans in your area. You know, you already have the information. You know how heavy their loads are. You know what kind of freight they ship. Mm -hmm. how they package it. Like all of that stuff is on those BOLs. Now on those BOLs, you're going to have phone numbers and stuff. A lot of times those phone numbers are not going to be the contact you need to reach out to. So it's up to you to hop on Google, right? Research that company. You can go on Google, look that company up to get their main number. You can go on LinkedIn to look up who all works for that company. See if you can get a contact for procurement or the transportation or shipping department. Do your research. Do your mm -hmm. due diligence. Don't just get that one hang up or, call somebody and they're like, I don't know who, who that person is and hang up. 
and just forget about it. Like, right. You got to want it. Mm-hmm. All right. So you do diligence. Definitely got to do that. And if you are a truck driver and you are now one to be a freight agent and you're going to utilize those BOLs as a reference or, you know, to reach out to them, you have to be careful with that. Yeah. Because there, there are certain, there's certain verbiage in your BOLs that you cannot back solicit brokers and stuff like that. So if you're caught doing that, then of course you can get into some major trouble and also understand that these customers or shippers will actually reach out to the broker and let them know like, Hey, your driver is over here trying to X, Y, Z. So you have to be very, very careful with that and read those BOLs because there's definitely verbiage in there that people don't pay attention to and they just signing it and that's it. So be careful if you're a truck driver and then you're also going to be a broker or a freight agent and you're starting to reach out to shippers on those BOLs. Definitely don't back solicit. That can get real ugly. All right. Also, if you're looking for customers, Google, like Mm -hmm. Google aerial view, just going on Google and searching for, Hey, what commodities ship the most in 2023? What commodities ship the most in spring? Like those simple Google searches. A lot of people skip over Google. It's Mm -hmm. the plug. All right. Google it. All right. Google. So much stuff on Google. Then once you find a place on Google, I challenge you, click on the aerial view in Google and just scroll around there. You'll find so many more leads, warehouses, manufacturers in that same area. Because a lot of times it's not just one plant in one area. It's a lot of places. Mm-hmm. So don't just use like get that one lead and be like, I'm done. No, one lead usually converts to maybe five or six or maybe 10 because there's so many warehouses and other businesses in that area that you knew nothing about until you like looked up that lead. Mm-hmm. So, Hey, extra research. That's how you build your list quick. Another thing like go in your pantry, go in your pantries first, then go in the grocery store, but first go in your pantries. Like I'm talking about low hanging fruit. We can say on the, on the, at the bottom of all your cans, your bottles, everything, it tells you where it was shipped from, where it was distributed from, where it was manufactured at. The ingredients. The whole nine. So you're able to start reaching out to those places as potential customers. Those are all leads. Like everybody's pantry has probably hundreds of leads in there. Mm-hmm. You know, I, da- I, I, I dare you all to just go look in your pantry and look <laughs> at the back of something. You, you'll be surprised. Like, damn. I can call them, 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 them. Mm -hmm. The food industry is very, very huge. And if we don't do anything else, what are we going to do? We're going to eat. I don't care if COVID, whatever's going on in the world, everybody's still going to hit the grocery store. The price of food is going to continue to rise. We're going to stock our freezers. Everybody was buying deep freezers during COVID, stocking everything up. When there is a storm, what are we doing? Running to the grocery store. Holidays, what are we doing? Running to the grocery stores. Yep. So the food industry is is definitely a good niche to get involved in. Yeah, I got to be one of the few people who be like, no, nah, don't go after lumber. Don't go after cheap freight. Don't think about just the simple things that everybody else teach you to go after. Let's go after steel, lumber, all that. No, it's so many things that ship across. Don't, like, yeah, don't, don't limit just, yourself. Right. And don't <laughs> just think so big that it's small mm. when you think lumber. Yeah. It's, it's big. It's heavy. Carriers don't want to don't want to haul that kind of stuff you got to think about the fuel costs yeah and then they don't pay they don't pay they don't pay much for that type of freight the shippers you have to think as small as let's just say a needle a syringe all that stuff comes separately yeah a needle is not manufactured like the whole syringe with the needle it's not all manufactured in the same place they have to source those they parts. They have to put it together. So you have to think all the way down to the smallest thing. Yeah. Every, I mean, everything has to be shipped. When you're driving on the highway, when you're driving on the road, and you see those flatbeds, and they have those big, uh, they, sometimes they have tankers on them. Sometimes they have like those uh, John Deere's and just all kinds of stuff that you need to, like like building supplies and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. If you take a look, you're like, okay. You yep. see the mobile homes, they have to be shipped. The everything oversized stuff is everything gotta be shipped. crazy. But keep in mind when you're looking for prospects, looking for customers, Walmart, Amazon, Best Buy, all that kind of crap, those will not be your ideal customers. Mm-mm. All right. Your ideal customers are gonna be small to mid-sized shippers. They're not yes. gonna be those big companies that you think that 
And and everybody and mama say, I'm gonna get in Amazon. Why? Amazon has their own trucks. Why? You're gonna get in there and battle to be the cheapest. Then everybody gonna talk about you on Facebook. Oh man, you got cheap freight. You can't never get it covered. All right. <laughs> Don't do that. Go after small to mid-sized shippers, build a relationship that way. That's Stop going after the big ones because you're just going to turn your wheels and you're going to get burnt out. You're going to be mad. Like this doesn't work. It does work. You just reaching after you reach out to the wrong kind of customer. Mm -hmm. All right. So once you start building that list, you're reaching out to those customers and all that stuff, create you a list on a spreadsheet or a notebook. Spreadsheets are best because you're able to import those into your CRMs or whatever you want to use. But just create you a list. Have some kind of way of documenting stuff as you, you know, reach out to customers, you follow up with them and all that kind of stuff. How you start is how you will finish. So it's. <laughs> no, you, you wrote that. So it's. So it's. <laughs> yeah. so it's, so it's <laughs> best to start off organized by using spreadsheets or, or CRM. CRM. All right. Sweets. Yeah, I didn't put that. That <laughs> was definitely a tier it. one. It just popped right out at me. I'm like, <laughs> oh, sweets. That's funny. But yeah, just make sure you're organized as you're putting those leads together. Cause when I started off, I just had a notebook. So I was doing like, you know, as I followed up with customers, I would just put like the tally marks, you know what I'm saying? And keep going. I would do up to 10 tally marks because your follow-up game got to be strong. Oh, it's all in the follow-up. It's all in the follow-up. It's all in the follow-up. All right. So boom, create my list on the spreadsheet. Now, what is in the value? What's the value that freight brokers and freight agents provide to shippers? All right. Our value is access to the high volume of pre-screened carriers. Mm -hmm. Big thing, pre-screen, screen the carriers. As a lot of new brokers, they start off, they don't even know about screening carriers properly. No. You know, they don't have access to stuff like Care 411, My Care Packs, and other systems to be able to really screen those carriers. Because right now, there's so much scamming and double brokering and triple brokering and all kind of crap going on where you have to really protect your ass and your mm -hmm. customers by researching and vetting those carriers before you decide to do business with them yeah because as of right now too there are a lot of people out here buying um MCs, MCs. yeah and guess what since we have systems in place we can tell if that new if that mc was just bought yeah I don't you know care what what it was. yeah it could be you can go out there and buy an mc that's six years old we can still tell that it was just bought mm -hmm. and we're not going to use you nope because I know what's going on right now. So you definitely have to be aware of, you know, those red flags. And, you know, if everybody in my program, they know we, we, we're we on top of your carriers just like you are before you book. We want to make sure that, you know, my guys get solid care. Right. Also, we offer competitive pricing. You know, we're not going to be like the highest. We're not going to be the cheapest, but we're going to be competitive. And a lot of customers just want competitive pricing. All right. We offer great communication. That's the biggest part. Mm -hmm. Communication is the name of the game. All right. Whether it's email, phone, text, you have to communicate between the carrier and the customer consistently. All right. You got to know what's going on with that load. Did you pick up on time? Are we going to be good for on time pickup? Are we good for on time delivery? Is there anything in between that's going to slow us down from making that happen? Right. All right. And as soon as you find out if there's anything that's going to slow us down, we got to communicate that to the customer as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. We don't never just. We, we don't turn our back on something and be like, it's going to work itself out. No, we're always ahead of the problem and we're communicating all the way through it. That's our value because that customer usually has an end customer that they have to communicate to. Right. And if you're not, you do not have to be at your computer 24 seven. If no. you got one of these right here, this, this is golden. That's it. This cell phone, this is a walking ATM machine. That's it. So if I'm not at my desk, I have my, my email on my phone. I got my phone app on my phone. So if the phone ring, I can still answer from my cell phone. If I got emails coming through, I can still respond. Yeah. And I'm going to re still respond professionally and in a timely manner. Yeah. Still going to have great communication. So you wouldn't know if I was at my desk, if I was in the on a boat or in the grocery store. Service level will not lack. Period. That's what it's all about. And I'm always be communicating. I don't care. Like I said, I'm on a plane too. Yeah, we still communicate. Mm -hmm. All right. And with one point of contact in most cases, um, like customers are tired of the whole 1-800 number. I'm, you know, I'm ticket number. Do, 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 do. They want someone they can call when some shit go wrong. Mm -hmm. One person that they can be like, Hey, where my truck at? And you know where the truck at. Not let me reach out to my team. 
in the beginning when I would call customers, yeah, I got a 24 hour service team. They don't care nothing about that. They're going to call you. All right. right. So all that 24 hour customer support team, I got a team in my, no, they want to talk to you. All right. Especially if you know, you're the one they've been dealing with all this time and you want to go try to switch it up. Nah. You. I want to deal with you. And all if right. they dealing with somebody else close to you, they better be like you. Yeah. And that's all about <laughs> that's just being available. And being available means just have your phone on. Be near it. If it rings, answer it. Simple. Super simple. If an email comes in from your customer, your carrier saying, hey, I'm going to be 10 minutes late. Let your customer know they're going to be 15 minutes late. All right. And clear your voicemail. Yeah. Clear your voicemail because my customers have cussed me out for having my voicemail too full. All right. <laughs> just clear. Just be ready. Be, be available. All right. So now let's talk about once you, you got all that, you got your lead list together. Let's start contacting those potential customers. All right. Let's pick up that phone and make it shake. So when we pick up the phone, we start calling potential customers. A lot of times the first person we're going to talk to is going to be the gatekeeper. That's going to be the person that usually answer the phone and say the company name. Hey, such and such ABC material. This is Lisa. And what do you do with Lisa? You treat her just like you're going to try to treat the, the decision maker. Right. You treat her with kindness. You just make her laugh. Like, my thing is, I like to just bring joy in everybody I talk to. I like to bring, like, that great energy. So if I talk to Lisa, Lisa, what's going on? Happy Monday. How we doing today? You had a good weekend? Okay, okay, okay. You ain't work yet. You ain't trying to work too hard as yet. They ain't pissing you off this morning, are they? You know, I'm trying to just get a laugh and get her loose. Because yeah, but at the same time, that's your natural personality. Yeah, that's my natural personality. But whatever your personality is, let it shine. But you catch more flies with honey than shit. So for me, I like if if it's all about relationship building. Lisa, whoever that gatekeeper is, they're either gonna send you to the voicemail or they're gonna put you in touch with the right person. Right. All right. So it's up to you to make a good in person impression on whoever answers that phone. All right. Don't just be like trying to rush past Lisa to get the bill. You know what I'm saying? Right. Take time to get to know Lisa. Talk to her, whoever that decision maker is, and, and whatever your tone is, do that. Cause, because, yeah, because Lisa can determine if you ever talk to Bill. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and when you're calling Lisa, whoever the gatekeeper is, then they're like, uh, who I speak to? You're trying to get to the decision maker, whether that's the traffic manager, the shipping manager, or whoever sets up new vendors or new brokers. That's who you're trying to speak to, the person in charge, the decision maker. All right. But in order to get to that person, you got to get through that gatekeeper, which a lot of people have problems with. Like I said, you catch more flies with honey than shit. That's it. What Lisa having for for breakfast? I'll go ahead and order some Chick-fil-A, have it delivered to her real quick, then call her tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? So Mm -hmm. there's different ways to just kind of massage the situation to be able to get to who you're trying to get to. It's sales. All right. So let's talk about five ways. I'm sorry, five steps to success in sales, like as a freight agent, all right? Number one, once you get that prospect on the phone, that decision maker, instead of trying to like get the the business on day one, Mm -hmm. trying to get down on the first night, try to seal the appointment. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times when you call them, you call them off guard. Right. You want something. They don't. They're in the middle of their busy day. They don't even have time to really dissect what you're trying to say. So try to sell the appointment. Try to be like, hey, I know it's probably a busy time for you right now. I don't know if it is, but is there any way I can maybe schedule some time or, or on a, a free time to get maybe 15, 20 minutes of your time to be able to discuss your transportation, your transportation needs or what you have going on in your transportation? Exactly. Uh, sell the appointment. That's it. That's number one. Don't try to get get down on the first night. And just rambling. Hey, this is here. Yeah. I'm a freight broker, and blah, blah, I just want to see that. Um, what do you got going on today? I have thirty thousand carriers in your area, and I'm available twenty four seven. And you can reach me. Da, 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 da. Like you, they just, don't care. They don't hung up in your face. Okay, you don't call me. them in the middle excuse of a me, busy Tia. Monday. Tia, excuse me. Excuse <laughs> me. Uh, I'm kind of busy. You I'm know? sorry. I'm sorry, but I'm I'm new to this industry. And I I got fifty thousand trucks in twenty four hours. They don't care. Okay, Mm -hmm. sell the appointment so you have their full attention. That way they're not stressed out and they're like, okay, get off my phone. All right. (laughs) Because most time they're going to tell you, oh, it's customer route. I don't have any time because Mm -hmm. you're you're interrupting their day. Sell the appointment. Lisa, block this number. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. All right. Build a rapport using names or commonalities. Someone you both may know, you know, whether if y'all from the same city, hey, you know, Joe Brown, he played. Baseball says, so, so, yeah, I know Joe. 
like something like that can be able to kick off a friendship. You know what I'm saying? Someone you may know or you work with that's in a similar industry, you know, mm-hmm. just names and likelihood. Um, you may have a driver that delivers there often if you're a dispatcher or if you are a driver, right? Or something you both may share interest in. You know, I had one guy who was working who was up sub basin of ours. Man, he did, did like a lot of research on his prospects before he called. And he looked at a guy on LinkedIn and saw that he loved fishing. This guy didn't know nothing about fishing, so he started watching fishing stuff on YouTube. And he learned that when they go fishing, they like talk about ripping lips. So he got on the phone with him like, hey, man, my girl, go rip some lips. You know, we both looking at him like, <laughs> he, he talking the lingo, you know what I'm saying? He ended up getting through to the customer and building that relationship. We had no idea what he was talking about. We was like, is this sexual harassment? Like, what is he doing? What is he doing? But it's like when, once, he, once he broke it down to science, so I was like, that's oh, smart. That's smart. smart. You know what I'm saying? So find something you both share interest in. Like if I'm calling somebody in New York or whatever the case may be or, you know, where they got different football teams or baseball teams, you might want to watch a little something. If you don't watch it, the way they talk about football or baseball, you have, you be like, okay, yeah, yeah, such and such, such, such. You got something you're talking about now. Definitely. It's not going to always be about freight. You know, I've never landed a customer talking about freight. I've never, never landed a customer where I talked about what I could save them, nothing like that. I've landed every customer I've landed by being myself and finding something that we both share interest in mm-hmm. and making people laugh and smile. That's it. All right. So next, number three, you want to uncover the needs of the prospect. All right. Become a master of a master of of asking open ended questions and shutting up to listen. Yeah. Like, ask a question and shut up. Like, I know it's hard. It, it is hard sometimes because you might lose your train of thought. And you're like, I just got to get this all out. I just got to. But no, you have to listen. So that way you can be able to reiterate what they just said, which can also lead up to your next question. Exactly. Or just having that conversation flow freely. Exactly. You know, segueing into the next thing if you listen. If you listen, all right. Mm-hmm. Um, what lanes are you having issues with? Great That's question. A great question. You know, I want to shout at those. You know, what areas would you like to see improvement in in your operation? You know, remember asking those open-ended questions, it builds trust, it demonstrates real interest that helps them feel more engaged and uh gives you more insight and qualitative uh data. Qualitative data. Mm-hmm. How do I just make this bigger? Oh, this oh, is my life. Oh. We didn't even know that. Oh, that's good. All right. So, <laughs> number four, I'll let you go back. All right. <laughs> Create a buying atmosphere. Be yourself and laugh with the prospect. If they aren't smiling, they aren't buying. Nope. You can't get on the phone dry. You can't be, get on the phone monotone. Hey, uh, I'm just really trying to get an opportunity from you guys. Um, so, you see, so you have two lanes. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I have trucks um, in the area. They don't want that. They okay? don't. They don't. You just bored me. The hell out of me. <laughs> <laughs> like, so, oh, this sounds so like come, a real perv. Come with interesting energy. Like, hey, good morning. How you doing, man? Hey, it's great to hear from you, man. I hope you're having a good day so far. I don't want to hold you up. Hey, do you have a few minutes today, or is it okay if I schedule some time with you later on? If I can learn more about your process. You know, you're getting straight to it. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Which, you know, decrease the pressure, increase sales. Mm-hmm. Because if someone gets on the phone and they feel pressured, they like, okay, up. okay, this sounds like a damn sales call. I know I've heard this before. I know this tone. Hey, not interested. Yeah, because as soon as you, <laughs> you hear somebody call and they don't have no bass in their voice, you know it's a sales call. Because mm-hmm. I don't know why, because I did this in the beginning too. As soon as you're about to get into sales, you know, you're trying to find your voice and then you be like, hey, how you doing? Hey, this is Bill. I'm, I'm calling. I'm really in, in, excited about what you got. You know what I'm saying? Like you get that high pitch. Keep the bass. I think keeping the base is going to be great for people. So remember, right. just to be yourself. All right, decrease the pressure, increase the sales. Mm-hmm. We love, we all love buying stuff. We hate being sold stuff, Definitely. right? Definitely. Everybody hates being sold. You can feel it. You're like it hurts. It's irritating. Mm-hmm. Like, at this point, shut up. Right. It's just like walking up when you going into the grocery store or something. You see somebody outside. You're like, oh, I know they're gonna stop me. I know they're trying to sell me something. No, thank you. No, thank you. No. Nope. Or you acting like you're on your phone. <laughs> You just go walk right past like, like you're I'm Walmart. not interested in that. 
Walmart walking through the electronics aisle. Uh, who do you use for your, uh, your your cable? Shut up. I don't nothing. I'm good. You, I use y'all. I'm Bye. great. Bye. <laughs> All right. Thank them for the meeting. Something simple. Like if they you talk to somebody and you're you're talking to somebody, just thank them for taking the time to talk to you. Definitely. That means a lot. Even if they told you no. Hey, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate the information I got for me in the game. You know what I'm saying? It's cool. I reach back out to you later on if I have any more questions. I just want to learn from you. You know, mm -hmm. stuff like that works. All right. Tell them that you're different. I know a lot of people like they 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 hear it so much. Like I'm different than everyone else. No, I am. Like you're getting me. Like I think everyone's everyone individually is different. Definitely. You can't put all of us in the same bucket. Mm -hmm. Like I'm different. Like I'm not gonna call you on the first day and say, hey. Um, y'all see her. I go losing my train of thought. She lost. Y'all will <laughs> let her come back. So no. <laughs> so basically, like telling them you're different. Like you're not gonna just sell them on the first day. Like I really want to get to know yeah. your needs. Like how can I help you? Yeah. So basically, that's how you saying like you're you're different. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, set proper expectations. You know <laughs> what I'm saying. Let them know what they can expect of you. You know what I'm saying? As far as like, you know, quick responses, great rates, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, see what, let them know kind of what you expect from them. You know what I'm saying? If you have any shipments available, reach out to me. You know, I want to partner with you. Let them know, like, I'm, this is what I'm really doing. Like, this is what we do for real. So I'm letting people know, like, I'm not going nowhere. Mm -hmm. You know, whether you do business with me today, next year, 10 years from now, I'll still be here. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And they like that to know that you're not like every other broker who's just in here for a quick lick. And gone. No, I'm here to be a long lasting relationship. All my customers I've had, except for except for one, which I'm okay with them being gone. Um, I've I've kept all of my customers. I've never lost one. Definitely. All right. Um give them permission to say no. Yeah. Let them know. Hey, if it works out great. If not, I'm all right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If I just want to know it won't hurt my feelings. It will it will not. I won't cry. Does that sound fair? Like don't that sound them. don't that sound good? <laughs> yeah, it won't hurt my feelings. It won't my feelings. Does that sound fair? Yeah. Cause we're all Who taught wouldn't like that. We're all taught to be fair. We're not taught to be good. We're taught to be fair. Does that sound fair? Yeah, it sounds fair to me. All right, cool. Sounds Let's fair. give it a try. Mm -hmm. All right. So create that buying atmosphere. Be yourself. Keep the bass in your voice if you have it. All right. And just decrease the pressure. Don't go in there trying to just go all in. You know what I'm saying? Um, let's go to the next. Number five. Always be closing. All right. Find out about their current situation. Do they have their own trucks? Do they use brokers? Is their freight customer routed? Meaning their customer provides the trucks or sends their own trucks? Like learn those questions, ask mm -hmm. questions, right? And then find out what they like. If they have a current broker or they're, they're covered, like what they like about their current situation. Like what's so great about it? All right. And and then once they say what's so great about it, great, great. I'd I love to get to that level one day. But question, um, is there any way, because I know you're getting great service, if I can get an opportunity, just to see if I'm competitive price wise. I already know the service that you're used to. I know I can top it. I can I can match it, if not top it. But I love to see if I'm competitive on pricing. I don't think it'll hurt anything. You know what I'm saying? If I'm able to like give you a pricing on a lane that you may have already moved or a lane mm -hmm. that you have a problem with, and if it looks great, great. If not, cool. It's worth a try, right? right? Because at the end of the day, if they have someone else, you're trying to do what? Position yourself as a plan B, boyfriend number two. Okay. okay, boyfriend number two. That's mm -hmm. what I was when we first got together. I was boyfriend number two, but guess what? I positioned myself as a plan B. Okay, Stupid. now I'm playing A. All right, just the put that only, in. The only, the one and only, the one, number one. <laughs> Kick them out. You can do the same thing, but you gotta position yourself as a plan B first. All right. right. Um. Think of sales like dating. Ain't that crazy? Mm, segue right on into that. <laughs> yeah, I had to do you it. You ain't even know it. <laughs> you ain't even know it. All right. Is it like dating? You meet someone, you like them, so you pursue them, right? You send the good morning text. You call them, see how they day going. You're selling yourself. Mm -hmm. You're selling yourself. You're, you're showing them, them what they're going to get. What could be. What you, what you, what, just what you got to look forward to. That's it. Good morning, beautiful. Good morning, queen. You got all that going on, right? Then eventually you all get the chance to go on a date. When you go on that date, you show out. That's your first load, right? That's what we're equivalent. Like, eventually, you're, you're dating, you're selling yourself, and eventually, boom, they're like, I'm going to give you that trial load. That's the date, all right? You go on that date, you kill it. Open the door, you know what I'm saying? Nice restaurant, treat it like a queen, pay for the bill. 
take her home, open the door, and leave. Boom, guess what? It's a relationship then. Oh. You missed the right. Oh, really? You missed the right. And that's what we're going for. We're going to try to build relationships. Then you continue to nurture the nurture relationship over the years for years to come. And it just continues to grow from there. All right. So that's kind of what sales is. You're starting off through the dating process. You know what I'm saying? You're showing them that you're interested. You know what I'm saying? Then eventually you build a relationship and a bond with that customer. And you become like just a part of their, their operation day to day. But you're still nurturing that relationship. You're still calling them in the mornings. Hey, good morning. How we doing? Just you had a good weekend. Whoop, whoop. It don't stop. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So then it becomes more than a customer. It's more like yeah, a family. It's family at that point. You know what I'm saying? But I had to start somewhere. A lot of people don't even start. Mm-mm. Like, so take that step, baby. All right. So boom. You done went through the dating process. Y'all in the relationship. Customer sent you some lows to quote. What do you do? What do you do? Post lows on low boards. That's what brokers do. Like for most of my mentees, we post on truck stop, post on that. You know what I'm saying? And we have other low boards as well. Mm-hmm. So you, that, when you're posting these loads that you're getting from your customer, you're marketing marketing them to carriers. So you let them know, hey, this picks up now uh, till 4 p.m. It's a light load, first come, first serve, quick load, quick unload, like things that, that will make them be attracted to call you to take your shipment. You just can't put it on there and be like 40,000 pounds, Atlanta, South Carolina. Call me. <laughs> Don't work that way. <laughs> it don't work that way a lot of times. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you have to market the load. Then, like, um, you also can do a truck search as well, depending on the load board. Like, with truck, trucker tools, not truck tools, I'm sorry, but uh, with truck stop, you're able to do a truck search as well as that. You're able to do a truck search of trucks who, you know, run that lane or trucks that are currently available yeah. to run that lane or coach on that load. Yeah, definitely. So those are all things that we actually go in um go into in the uh mentorship as well correct then also as you continuously build your care network because as you're posting loads cares are calling you on those loads and as they're calling you on those loads guess what you're taking their information and putting them on spreadsheets you're putting them into your crm whatever the case may be your notebook so that way if you have those loads again you can reach out to those same cares right. so that's called building your carrier network all right. Yep, because at the end of the day, you do not want to always have to rely on the low boards. That's yeah. not the name of the game. No. You want to build up enough carrier relationships to where you're not posting on the low board. You could just because we all know low boards go down. Mm-hmm. Um, you can get some crazy carriers off the low board. I mean, of course, you can get um good carriers too, but you want to be able to have those good carriers already on standby in your CRM, on your spreadsheet, so you could just reach out to them directly. Definitely. No load board involved. Definitely. All right. And also, Google search. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you can't find carriers in the area, Google is going to always be your best friend. A lot of people, like, they just get, skip past Google like it, it ain't there. Like, it's there for a reason. You can find carriers in any situ- any area, mm-hmm. whatever the case may be. It's just, like, how much work you want to put into finding the carrier. To cover those yeah. lows. That's the thing. I mean, we'll look up anything else on Google, but then when it comes to like business stuff, for some reason, we all get dumb. We get dumb, or we just want that quick find. We don't want to go search for it. No. Nah. You know what I'm saying? So we'll look up something real quick, like I have a bump on my skin and it's red. You're going to diagnose yourself on Google, but then <laughs> you won't go on Google and search for a truck. Retarded. Weird. Yeah. So Google search. Google's always your best friend. Last last ditch effort. Can't go wrong with Google. Definitely. All right. So after you do all that, you find truck for your low, you know, you want to say like, hey, what's like commission? Like once I actually, you know, get a load and all that kind of stuff. This is an example of a load that you've got a quote from your your customer say, hey, let's book it. Whoop-de-whoop. This is how that process goes. Let's say it's a load from Cranberry, New Jersey, going to Los Angeles, California. The carrier says, hey, I can do it for 3800 bucks." All right. I quoted my customer $4,400. They said, book it. All right. The profit $600 bucks on that. Out of that 600 I make 360 bucks for making sure, hey, the, tr- the truck picks up on time. We get loaded with the correct amount of freight, and we deliver in the time window that they asked for, and the track and give them updates. All right. So that's what I do. And just imagine, you do that $360 per load. You do that five times a week, 
you know, just with one load a day, $1,800 a week. You know what I'm saying? Moving one load a day with one customer. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Y'all can do that. And then a lot of times, if you're doing the same load every day, you're going to be running those with the same carrier, the same group of carriers. So it ends up being smooth and easy, you mm-hmm. know, which is why we say keep those carriers information and call on those loads because instead of having to post and pray like we hate to do, you reach out to those carriers. Hey, I got another one of those. Can you do it? Yeah, same price. Yeah, let's run it. Too easy. I'll send you the rate confirmation in a minute. You know, it's all about making your job easier and quicker because mm-hmm. customer wants a quick response. They don't want to use different carriers every time they do a load. So if you have carriers that have done it, you already know, hey, they, they tried and true. They do great work. Right. Their communication is on par with my customer needs, what I need. Let's run it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. 360, every time they just text, say, hey, I got a load, just to email a, a carrier and say, hey, you want to do it again? 360. Now, who can't use $1,800 a week? <laughs> Like you feel me? Because we do get paid every week. Every week. Now, every Saturday morning. We don't have to worry about when the customer the customer's gonna pay, which they typically on a on a net 30. Some on pay 60 days. But the broker has to deal with that. The broker has already paid the carrier. The broker is already paying us before they even see a dollar. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So who wouldn't want eighteen hundred dollars a week? I know I like it. I like having my money every week. I see oh. my first eighteen all week. I was like, Phew. exactly. <laughs> no taxes coming out of that. Of course, None. you got to pay taxes at the end of the year or quarterly or however you decide to do it. But that's your money. Yeah. Without having to do all the extra stuff, you're just literally building your business. America's best kept and secret. And getting your direct deposit every week. Every week. That's it. And you got to think at one. Just this is on a small scale too. Like at. One point I was doing 30 or 40 of these a day. You know what I'm saying? So to me, I was like, I'm making more than rappers. You know what I'm saying? Like you couldn't tell me nothing. I'm at the airport, like, yeah, what's up, Boosie? You got a little money, but you know, we making more than rappers. Oh, we're gonna leave Boosie. <laughs> we're gonna leave Boosie. Oh, Boosie. who said Boosie? Nice. Hey, Boosie got a mouthpiece on him. Please oh, don't call right. Boosie. We, we just playing. <laughs> we just playing, we Boosie. Just playing. We just playing, Boosie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is an example of someone running that same play pretty much. This is one of my mentees. He made 50 calls a day consistently to the same niche of customers and ended up landing his first customer in two weeks. With his no first experience. two weeks, no experience. All right, and so after his first two weeks, he this was his first check, $3,913. You know what I'm saying? He ran nine loads and then combined made $3,913. Now, if we do the math, $3,913 a week, if you did that every month, that's $15,652 a month. Mm. $187,000 a year. Ain't that something? Crazy. That's crazy. But people don't see the earned potential there. They're thinking, like, I'm going to be the broker. This man don't have no overhead. He don't have to even think about paying nobody. He just got paid. He's on to the next week to make more money. Now, if you was a broker, you damn sure ain't seeing this right here. No. Period. All right? So, mm-hmm. that being said, how many of y'all feel like y'all can do this? If you feel like you can do this, type I can do it in the comments. Let's go. Because Let's like see I the said, energy. Let's see the let's energy. Let's see the energy. I can for do me, it. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. For me, I saw my father-in-law. I said, shit, if he can do it, I know I can do it. And I did it. So my goal was, and still is, to inspire people to see that if Devin can do it, I know damn well I can do it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We ain't nobody special. Nobody special. Mm-hmm. Well, to our kids and us, we are, but right. Like in the world, in the overall scheme of things, we're nobody special. We wake up just like everybody else do. Only thing is, I want it. Like you gotta be hungry. It you gotta takes be a hungry. Different type of person. It takes a different type of mindset because when you go work on a job, you basically know what your salary is, right? Yeah. You know that at the end of the week, every two weeks, every first and fifteenth, or whatever it is, you're gonna see that paycheck, right? As long as you're employed. But doing this, you can see the numbers, but you really don't know how much you're gonna make. And mm-hmm. then you know that after training, I still have to bust my ass. You know what I'm saying? It's not you can't physically see it. Mm-mm. You can't touch it. But when you work in a job, you know what that salary is going to be and what you're going to get paid. But with this, 
It's like, okay, I have to get these customers. I have to get these loads. Once I get these loads, then I know the money's gonna gonna come. Mm-hmm. But I'm telling you, if you can fight through that and push every single day, every day, give it your all, man, man. it's life changing. This industry, being freight agents, has been the best thing ever. No mm-hmm. matter what else I've tried to do personally, mm-hmm. because me being me, I just I'm a creative person. So I like doing different things. Nothing that I've ever done in my life has brought me this kind of money. No. Has never given me the type of freedom and relationships that we've been able to build. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it's crazy. It just does not seem real sometimes. It just doesn't to this day. No, I tell you what it didn't seem real. When we got our first, like, like we started really getting some real checks. That's when I was like, okay, they ain't gonna pay me on time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like you you ever had to check that bill? You like, I know they ain't gonna pay me all my money at one time. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I remember like, you know, if a lot of people you, you hear the numbers, you be like, man, it's crazy. Like my first forty thousand dollar week. I I seen it and I was like, that shit don't even seem real. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm getting forty thousand dollars this week. And so in my head, I'm like, they ain't gonna pay me all this damn money. That's a lot of money to pay somebody. And I woke up on Saturday morning, that shit was in my account. But the crazy thing is, we aren't number one. We weren't even number one. But I didn't care because I, I had $40,000 in my account. Then I turned around next week, same thing. It got bigger and bigger and bigger. But I'm just saying, what, but, when I say we're not number one, is that somebody else within the company made more than us. getting more money in their account yeah. than we were that week. So yeah. it's like, wow. I thought I had made the record. That's the crazy part. Because I called her. I was like, did I do the record? And she was like, nah, nah. You still got like 20000 more to go. I was like, damn. <laughs> I was like, what am I doing with my life? You know what man, I'm saying? Y'all, this... <laughs> but it's a it's a it's a woman, man. She's the number one agent in this company. Her name is Vilma. She is like the smartest person in the world to me. Killing um me. when we first started. Um last I didn't have any training. This was before, you know, you know, right now you got a million Instagram gurus on here and stuff like that. That they weren't around back in those days. Mm-mm. So, you know, when I wanted to learn about stuff, I would just have conversations with Vilma. And she would just tell me like how much she believed in me and she knew that we can do it. You know what I'm saying? And this lady to, didn't even know us. Didn't know us, never seen us a day in our life, but she just felt the energy and knew that we wanted it. And she kept on just pouring into us and pouring into us. And it's like to see her grow to the point where she's at is crazy. You know, she did over 20 something million last year, um, which is crazy as an agency over 20 something million dollars in one year. And people and, and she could take that and run with it. Yeah. But can you imagine having to do all of that, your staff, this, that, and the third? Because one thing people don't understand, too, is that when you're an independent freight agent, you can run it the way you want it. Yeah. You can have a staff. You can have a sales team. You can have a graphics team. Whatever you want to do, it's your company. Once you become a full-blown agent under the broker, it's your company. You, sure. can, you can do whatever. So sure. You know what I'm saying? But... None of the agents under this brokerage have desires to be brokers. Mm -mm. It's not as glamorous as people paint it to be. That's stressful. It is. Because regardless whether you're a broker, your agent, you still have to sell at the end of the day. You still. So whether you go out and spend all that money and get the broker started and all that kind of, you still have to. You still got to pick the phone up and make those calls to customers, and you know you need to me. I love it having a support group that we have. Like we've been able to form a great support group yeah. of people. Like even our mentees, like of course we're pouring into them and we're inspiring them, but sometimes they inspire me. You know, sometimes I need that motivation because you know, we're all entrepreneurs, mm-hmm. you know, whether we're any level of entrepreneurship, everybody has their days where it's just like, damn, I'm, I need, I'm tired. Can somebody, <laughs> damn, pour into Can somebody me? pour into <laughs> me? So sometimes I get on there too. So it's just like, it's good to have group. It's good to have support. It's good to have a community of people like all pushing towards what you're trying to push towards because mm-hmm. as we all know for people who've been entrepreneurs it's not easy being an entrepreneur you it's know you go not. through hurdles you go through ups and downs you go through you know, self doubts a lot you know what i'm saying so people people around you that putting you down like no why are you putting yourself through that you need to just get a job go back to work why are you stressing yourself out about building your own business you 
you weren't raised that way or I worked all my life and I turned out just fine or, you know, all this kind of stuff. Like, Mm -hmm. no, things have changed. Yeah. And this is what I want to do. I see something in myself, regardless if you see it or not, I know what's in me and I know what I want. Definitely. Definitely. Appreciate that, Ty's wife. (laughs) Right. Hey, Ty's wife. So, so for most people that know, like we used to have a six week training program. Uh, we retired that six week training program because I felt like six weeks just pushing out of people trying to figure it out. That felt like too long for people to get the information. So, um, we don't do the live six week training, but you know, we do have an online training portal with our surveys opportunity for a chance for you to start building your business as you learn with caps with lives of every live that we have in there. We're still throwing even more and more information. So every time we do lives, we get information. It's just so much information there. It's crazy. It's going to take you from A to Z on building your freight agency. You know what I'm saying? Um, So when you join our team, the sub agent opportunity comes with it. So what that means is that you would be an agent under us. You don't have to worry about going out, finding a brokerage to be under. You ain't got to get no surety bond. You ain't got to get no insurances. You ain't got to spend no extra money. None of that kind of stuff. Use what you have and build off of that. You know what I'm saying? And you just get to be a part of a team. You got our support the whole way. Mm-hmm. Everyone who, you know, is in our program, ever been in our program, know we're like open book. We're always available. You know, we're, this is what we do every day. You know what I'm saying? We're wealth information. You know, we got a great team behind us, part of a great company that you can actually grow in and kind of like spread your wings, mm-hmm. you know, and even if it's stuff that, you know, because we know a lot, but some things we don't know. So we don't know. We get the, the people from the brokerage involved. And they're able to be like, hey, yeah, we do this right here. I can connect you with this person or that person. So it's just a good like community of right. people who do everything when it comes to freight. Cause that's all that's all we do. All of us move freight every day. And they want to see you grow. Yeah. They love it. Of course, if you grow, the brokerage as a whole grows as well. Yeah. And then also your customers, they love to see the growth. Yeah. They love to see the growth. Don't think that. Okay, I'm making money, so I can't move. I can't be friends with my customers on Facebook. Of course, you have all my customers, my friends on Facebook, right? But of course, you have to, you know, censor yourself, be mindful of what you're posting. But they absolutely love to see the growth. Yep, for real. Um, this is what success as a freight agent looks like. Some people, like, of course, you know, our success, we make great money, but we also have, you know, if you've seen our other Facebook on our YouTube video with Darius, he's done ten ten thousand dollar weeks. Uh, we have Rashi and Jay, their best week, 16K up under us. Um, we have Corey. He's consistently making 800 to to $1,000 per load. One of the most, you know, influential people in the group. He's very motivational. His story is great, you know, but this is just part of our team and part of people, you know, in our community that's doing it, like putting in the work every day. Rashi and Jay were able to go under the brokerage as their own agency because that's what our program is all about. It's not meant for, you know, someone to be up under us as a freight agent and stay, there. and stay there. Our program is meant for you to go under the brokerage. You know, after you get your customers, we teach you everything. You learn it. You got it. You know what I'm saying? Like you making money, you good. We let you go straight up under the brokerage. All your customers go with you. Everything in your system transfers in the background. Mm-hmm. Cause it's all the same system. Like it's just a real smooth training process. Definitely. We do not keep your book of business. Period. Um, we're going to teach you how to set your business up. We're going to teach you how to search for customers. We went over some of that today, but we have other ways to search for customers. Like I got a lot of information. Mm -hmm. All right. We're going to teach you what to say, what to say to customers, what else you can say to them, um, how to find trucks, how to service your customers and so much more. All right. Absolutely. And then what you get assistant assistance and coaching from us. We're, we're the kind of mentors that's always available. If you're looking for mentors that, you know, I saw for something like that, this ain't that, I'm hard body. Like, I want you to get on that phone. I want you to make the money. You know what I'm saying? I want you to get past to overcome the excuses that you're giving yourself. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, Tijuana, she's like the more emotional, supportive person. But me, I'm like, let's get this shit. Let's go. Let's make this year our year. Let's not use the same excuses we used in 2022 and 2021 going in 2023. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So that's me. Um, you get access to all of our systems and the documents needed to operate. You get access to our weekly Q and A sessions that we have with all our mentees every week, um, and support we need it. So that's the biggest thing, support. A lot of people like they're like, "Dang, I need support. I need someone to be able to 
help me. Mm-hmm. I got this low, but I forgot what to do next. Or yeah. is this for a 26 foot box truck or is this for a drive van? Because the right. customer didn't tell me. Can you imagine getting a customer and now you just like, what do I do? I don't know what to do. And you end up sending a wrong truck type. Your customer done cussed you out. <laughs> now they just dropped you nah. just like that. First, first few loads, our team help you out, make sure everything's smooth. You know, as far as the tracking, driver pickup, all that good stuff. Um, then we do we have the the agent uh, manager. She gets on there, shows you how you build your loads in the TMS. We make sure you're good on that. We got access to virtually any kind of option when it comes to shipping. It's crazy as far as air freight, LTL, dredge, full truck load. Um, we even have an LTL system where your customers be able to get their own log in and they can actually go in there and book their own freight, mm-hmm. which a lot of customers want that versus having to go through you to get quotes. They can get their own quotes and you just handle the back end. Like we, it's it's crazy the amount of things you have access to. Exactly. By just getting with a strong brokerage that has all those systems in place. All right. And for everybody on here, I'm going to show love. You know, for those of you who are serious, we got a special gift for you. All right. Regular price for our online training, nineteen ninety seven. For the next twenty four hours, with the code Freight Webinar, I'm taking five hundred dollars off for everyone that's on this training right now. It's on this call um, for the next twenty four hours. Our online training portal with sub agent opportunity is fourteen ninety seven. All right, at www.truckintoprofit.com. And if anybody who knows us, that's the lowest price it's ever been. So hop on it. We definitely want to see everyone who who definitely is ready and who's ready to put that work in, be a part of the family to go ahead and start the 2023 off right. Um, Stop just thinking about it. Yeah, we've had a lot of people that be like, I've been following y'all for three, four years. I'm ready to start. No, you you could have been dumb jumped on it. You could have made the kind of money you want to make and change your life. You know what I'm saying? So don't just look. Mm -hmm. Take the steps. You could have already had your million dollar book of business. Yeah, been on the brokerage. All of that. <laughs> the stuff. whole nine. You know? Yeah. So, what was that? So, yeah, like I said, freight, freight webinar is the code. 1497 is the price. $500 off. Next 24 hours at midnight tomorrow night, the code goes off. Yep. So, if you can't afford the 1497 all at one time, we do have an additional. Um, payment plan available on the website, but it won't it won't be the five hundred off. Yeah, the right? payment plans are for the for the regular price. Right. So you want a payment plan? We do have payment plans on there starting six ninety seven down for people who you know want to do the regular price and want to just split it up. Definitely pop in there um, and start. Just hop in. You know that way you can go ahead and get the information. You can go and hop in our Q and A by this Thursday. Be ready to go by Friday. Start making some phone calls and start getting to the money. But don't mm-hmm. let fear hold you back definitely not we ain't doing that no more no not this year not ever ever again all right so now let's get to the q and a let's go q and a talk to me type it yeah type those questions man we want to answer any questions anyone else has see i don't know how to i guess it would be in the chat i'm assuming let's see here don't click nothing and we be going off. Yeah, there. I've been I've been clicking the wrong button. So if you got any questions, type them in the chat. Let us know. Let's see. Type them in the chat. Let us know. I don't know what else. Yeah, you can't bring people on, right? Nah. What's this? Nah. Yeah. yeah, I ain't got no way to look. All right, so, so would they be here? What about there? Oh. No. Ah, no chat there. Okay, go back to the comments, I guess. All right. All right, so I don't see any any questions. All right. All right, so that being said, um, if anyone does have any questions, we do have appointment scheduling links on our website. Mm-hmm. So if you go to the Truck and the Profit website, um, we do at the bottom of each one. Let's see. So we learn contracts and OS and D. What's that? What do you mean contracts and OS and D? If you're talking about government contracts, no. Yeah, we're not gonna do like we don't do um like we have access to do government contracts, but mo- none of us really do government contract work. 
don't know if that helps. Two questions. When I became. When I become. Oh. When I become own freight broker agent, does the commission amount change? Yeah. Yes. It when, goes up to 70 30. So you'll get 70%. The um, brokerage gets 30. But everything else stays the same, like all the systems and all of that good stuff. Um, you'll still have all of that. Yeah, it's 70 30. Then once you get to the point where you're doing like, let's say, $20 million a year in sales, then it goes down to like 80, 20. I think it is like 85, 15, something like that. Yeah. But it shrinks. The more money you make, it, the, the commission shrinks. Right. On their end, not yours. You get more money. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. Appreciate you answer, asking that question, Siobhan. Thank you. Yeah, because I was going to say that earlier, too. Let's see. Negotiate contract shipper averages, shortages, damages, basically claims resolution. Well, as far as the claims process, we don't deal in the claims process. As a third party, we just provide the carrier's information to the shipper and let them figure it out with the insurance um, company. We don't get, like, fully involved with you know, that claims process. Mm-hmm. Try to, you definitely want to remove yourself out of that mm-hmm. as much as possible. Um, yeah. Any to, claim situation that we've had, that's all we've had to do. Yeah. Is just give the um, insurance information over to the shipper or the customer, and then they take it from there with the carrier. Now, if the customer is having any issues with, you know, the carrier or something like that, then we'll get back involved. But other than that, that's between the customer and the carrier. Right. As far as negotiating the contract with the shipper averages, a lot of times that could be where they're like, hey, I need an RFQ or RFP where I need just your rates for, let's say, to cover this lane for a particular year or something like that. We don't recommend doing year long rates right now with the market like it is. I would just say, hey, I can I can cover these per quarter mm-hmm. um, and revisit them. But that's when you're pretty much setting, you know, negotiating those rates with uh, shippers when you're doing those RFQs. And that's pretty much posting those loads and negotiating down with those carriers. When you build those relationship with those carriers, as they call, seeing what the absolute best rate is for the, that they can do it for and get multiple carriers to give you their best rate. So you can be able to find out what rate you actually can run those lanes for to be able to guarantee those rates for a quarter. Mm-hmm. But yes, we will show you how to do all that. We help everybody because everybody's customers and customer base is going to be completely different. So it's not going to be a one size fits all. So you could have a question that, Let's say you're dealing with customers that do contract freight and you're doing RFQs and someone else is just doing dreads and someone else is doing spot market. So it's like we all have to, you know what I'm saying? We kind of like being them, being in, we've been to everybody, TQL, et cetera, like getting involved in claims. So I wonder if we had to, yeah, we don't, we ain't don't like TQL. Involved. We ain't like that. We like to take two steps back, pass that insurance information to that customer and remove ourselves. I dealt with several claims. You don't want to be a part of that. Mm-mm. You want to be part of that process, like period. That. See, RFQ process change, yeah, definitely, and that's yeah. why Devin is saying too, like, do not quote for a whole year out on yeah. RFQs because you get the screwed. rates are crazy, and then you'll be held to those rates. But it's not up to you; it's up to that carrier if they're gonna run it. You can give a rate all day, mm-hmm. but if the carrier saying no, you just stuck. You know what I'm saying? So, um, quarterly, quarterly. quarterly. On those RFQs and just you know be honest with the with the customer, you know I don't want to give you these rates and then I can't honor them. Correct. So and Siobhan, like as far as using your own LLC, you can use your LLC once you come up under us as a sub agent, and I think that's best because you want to write off stuff that you're getting for your business and stuff like that. So for tax purposes, heck yeah, go ahead and crank it on up. Yeah, yeah. definitely. If you already know this is what you want to do, go ahead and start the LLC and that way you don't have to do what we did. Because when we first started, we just went head first. Head first. No LLC, no nothing. Because regardless, once it's time to get paid, we don't pay you. Like, that's the one thing we have. We have everything so smooth with this process. Once you actually get loads, you get paid just like we do from the brokerage. So they'll get your banking information, whether it's your business bank account, personal, whatever case may be, that's something you'll deal with with the accounting department from the brokerage. And so, you know, if you're going to get paid to your business or your personal, totally up to you. But mm-hmm. we just, like, we started at number one, like, we're going to have everything nice and smooth because yeah. we don't like dealing with nobody's money. Exactly. <laughs> They're going to make sure it's right. They're doing all of that good stuff. So 
we don't we don't even see it nope the we account department is gonna it. once you get a load they're gonna send over a form for us to send to you then you send that directly to the account department and they will pay you whichever way you have it set up whether it's your llc or if it's to your personal bank account whichever mm -hmm. way absolutely for sure All right, great questions love it mm -hmm. i love people ask like questions y'all already in logistics with you these feel questions me? you feel me especially especially todd's wife mm-hmm Todd's wife knows her stuff. Or either Todd. Or either Todd. I think they're gonna double they, they're gonna double team it. Uh -huh. Todd and his wife are gonna double team it. Mm -hmm. That's how they need to do Siobhan it. Siobhan wants the money. Siobhan already ready. She already see the money. Said, hey, is my money gonna go up? <laughs> <laughs> but so I'm glad, I'm glad that I'm I'm glad that I gave a lot of information, Todd. Mm -hmm. And I really appreciate it. I just didn't want to somebody told me that we didn't give enough information on our last webinar, and it made me like, look, I want to give as much. <laughs> as i can on this webinar because i honestly thought i think that was like a troll or i don't care it made me feel some kind of way because i am not one of these internet marketers i'm someone who just actually does this and i got a good heart and i ain't trying to do nothing wrong for nobody and i don't want to just i ain't trying to just sell everybody i want people to get the opportunity that i was i was afforded and to be able to get up under a great brokerage to to do it up under you know like we're up under business to business with mr matt perkins and they've been able to really help us excel and I'm sure it can help someone else as well. I'm an owner op, op, I run, I run liquid tanks. Hmm. Well, out of truck and be home. I, I already know that. Definitely. I already know that. That's, been there. Being being away from home is just like I equivalent being a truck driver to being overseas, man. Because you're not you're not with your family. Thirty three. Oh my goodness, I couldn't imagine. Like you, like you miss so much. You miss so much. Like you making the money, but it seems like you just miss so much of like the little small stuff, man. That's the thing that I, I feel you, Todd. Let's go. Whenever you're ready, just say the word. Just say the word because you are you got the experience. You are you know the game. So that's all about just you know reaching sure. out to your contacts. Thirty three years. Oh, you got contacts. You, yeah, and then you I got know contacts. you've seen a lot of changes in the trucking industry. Yeah, thirty three years. Yeah, you, you you wouldn't have a you wouldn't have a problem at all, Todd. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Definitely. you know you know you know the game. So right. let's go. 2023 let's make it your year mm -hmm. i appreciate it thank you siobhan siobhan yeah todd third third todd and his wife 33 years in trucking man right we yeah. appreciate that thank, thank you, so, you much. so much the reddick i don't want to say your name wrong right. mr and miss reddick and juline did i say it right in juline in uh i'm gonna call you e because i might say it wrong and you're gonna be mad thank you e. <laughs> thank you e <laughs> <laughs> that is a major it deal. is 33 years 33 years man liquid tankers i don't know many people that's doing liquid like liquid tankers liquid, folk, all that liquid kind of, uh -uh. Mm. so you can psh, take that and I'm run sure with that's it a, it's definitely a, a market net, for yeah. that for sure you make a lot of money off of that mm -hmm. all right thank you siobhan thank you siobhan all right we got any more questions before we hop about this thing but of course you guys can always hit us up i know a lot of you probably already follow us on social media um you can hit us up on instagram or facebook and then um also on the website you can schedule a call if you need to schedule a call and um yeah yeah, that's Good. it, man. We really appreciate y'all taking the time out, y'all. Sunday night. <laughs> she probably going to be to sleep tonight. Lord Jesus, Lord <laughs> Jesus. Join the, no, join the no sleep crew. The no sleep crew, because we, we will be up most right. likely. You know what I'm saying? We don't, you know, tomorrow's Monday. You know what I'm saying? We're trying like, to get. How do y'all respond so quick? We just, we be used up. to it. We like, used to it and we be up. We be up like two o'clock. Then we get up in the morning. We start moving some freight. It's Monday. Gotta get right. We're excited. We excited. We excited too, man. So we appreciate all of y'all for tapping in with us. And hey, we're gonna try to do more of these and look mm -hmm. forward to seeing y'all in the mentorship. Yeah, if y'all getting in, y'all better tap in because it's the first quarter, and this is the time when shippers yeah. are doing, you know, RFQs, doing their boots, the RFQs, up. seeing who they're weeding out, who they're bringing in. They're ready for fresh talent. They want to give somebody else a try. So definitely think about that. Yeah, this ain't the time to play. This time to put some action in. So let's go. Time to put the work in. Foot on the next season, 2023. That's it. Appreciate y'all. Thank y'all so much Thank for tapping in. Thank y'all. Have a good night.